Hey guys, we're back, AF Math and Engineering, Fred here, and we are going to continue this problem that we started. So, a couple things that I just wanted to talk about before we continue. Uh, the, at the start of the question, we solve for the reactions, okay? So now we're ready to actually start solving for the deflection, all right? And after this, this part, I think we'll do the, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll do the angle of rotation, but we'll solve for that. But initially, we're just going to solve for the deflection at different points using the integration method, okay? So when I said that we need to take into consideration both loadings, we, we do, but that was more for the angle of, of uh, rotation at, at a certain point rather than the deflection. So let's take a look at the deflection first. And the question asks us to find the deflection at the midpoint of AB and at point C, okay? So this is fairly straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to cut the beam in the section that we want to solve for the deflection, okay? So, for example, if we want to solve for the deflection somewhere between A and B, which is what the first part of the question asks us for, we're gonna have to cut just anywhere in the center, okay? And anywhere in the center here because there's no other loadings or something like that. It's, for example, if there was a load here, as well as the distributed load, then we need to cut before and we need to cut after. But because there's only the distributed load in the moment, we can just cut anywhere in between AB. So let's start with that. And I like to start by drawing a little bit of a diagram. So I first right up here. So we're cutting in between zero, okay? So zero is greater than or equal to X, greater than or equal to 15. Okay, so that's the section that we're working with or that we're dealing with here. So we're going to cut the beam here, okay, and whenever we cut it we have a downwards shear and we have an upwards or positive moment, okay? That's the sign convention there, that's usually how it is, or always how it is. And this distance here is going to be x, okay? That is going to be 60x, alright, because 60 times which is the distributed load here, times this distance, okay, in this case it's x, so this is variable now. And we have the reaction here at A, okay, and we solve for that, that's 398 kilonewtons, okay, upwards. So, what we need to do, and this is the first step of solving for the integration, is you just need to write out an equation for the moment, okay. And we are going to write that here. So we're going to take this as our positive direction, okay? And we have, okay, we have this positive moment here. We're going to include that. We have this force acting downwards, this, this variable distributed load here. And the distance to that is x over two, right? Because this whole thing is x, so half of that, x over two, that's acting in the positive direction, that's good, okay? And we have 398 kilonewtons, and that is acting in the clockwise direction, okay? So that's going to be negative. And that distance is x. So 398x equals 0, okay? So if we go ahead and simplify that, so just kind of isolate for m, you know, divide 60 by 2, make sure all the signs are good, we end up with negative 30x squared plus 398, sorry, plus 398x, okay? So, what is this? What did we just find here? Okay, so this is important, this formula here. This is equal to, and this is how you write it when you're solving a deflection problem, this is equal to EI d squared v over dx squared. So the second derivative of v with respect to x is essentially the moment, okay? And what we've done is we've just derived the equation, okay, and 30x squared plus 390, so we're not gonna change that. We're just gonna rewrite m here, okay? So this is equal to m, all right? And that is the first step in solving for any deflection, okay? So that's gonna be our first equation. Now, how do we find the, the deflection in this section? So this is this formula here, okay? This expression here is for the moment, all right? And we need to find the deflection, okay? So this is just something that you kind of need to remember, but we're going to take the derivative of this two times, okay? And once we get the derivative of this twice, we are going to end up with an expression for the shear, okay? For V, essentially, or for the deflection. I'm, just, I'm gonna edit that out, it's not for the shear, what am I saying? 
for the deflection V, okay? So let's take the derivative of this, all right? So EI here is constant in this question. We're going to write that up here. EI is constant, all right? And what that means is that we're just gonna carry EI with us throughout the entire question and we're not gonna sub in numbers for that, okay? So let's take the derivative of this. So the derivative of d squared v by dx squared, okay, is just dv by dx, right? Simple enough. The derivative... What am I saying? What am I talking about? I don't know. Why am I saying the derivative? We need to integrate. We need to integrate, yeah. Fucking idiot. Okay, so now that we have come up with the expression for the moment of, of this beam here, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this formula here, okay? We're going to integrate it twice, all right? And what that's going to give us for the first integration is it's going to give us the expression for the rotation at any point in this section, and it's, the, the second integration is going to give us the deflection at any point uh, uh, for, for any x that we want to sub into that equation, okay? So integrating EI times d squared V over dx squared, we're going to get dV over dx, okay? And then the integration of 30x cubed over three, right? It's n plus one divided by n plus one. We all know how to integrate by now. And we have 398x squared over two, okay? And we're just gonna add a constant of integration C1. Okay, make sure you label it one, all right? That's important. And this is going to be our second equation, as all right there, okay? And as I said before, we're going to integrate once more, all right? And once we integrate once more, so integrating this, sorry, I forgot to carry the EI with us there. That's constant, okay? So integrating this, we're going to just end up with V, okay? Okay, and integrating this, we have X four, okay? Three times four is 12, plus integrating this, 398x cubed over six, plus integrating C1, integrating a constant is just going to be times x plus C2, okay? And that is our third equation, okay? So what we've done here is we have three equations here, and using these equations, we can find this here, which is represents this dv by dx represents the rotation and this v here represents the deflection okay and to solve for any point on here for deflection or rotation all we're going to do is we're going to sub in the value of x or the point of concern or where we want to find something out about into this equation here or this equation here Okay, and we're going to find the deflection of the rotation at that point. So, what we do need to do is consider these constants of integration, okay? C1 and C2. Now, C1 and C2 are unknown at this point, all right? And in order to solve for C1 and C2, we're gonna have to introduce some, something called boundary conditions, okay? Because at this point, we have too many unknowns and not enough equations to solve for these, okay? So what we're going to do in this question is we're gonna introduce, like I said, boundary conditions. So boundary conditions are known points on the beam where we can ascertain certain values about, about the deflection or about the rotation that we know for sure, okay? And these always occur at certain points. So for example, on, on this beam, at point A and point B, as you can see, we have a pin and we have a roller. Sorry, my drawings aren't excellent, so I labeled them for you. And at the pin and the roller, okay, we know that the beam can't move vertically at those points, right? Supports at A and B are not restricting the rotation of the beam. However, the beam cannot move up and down, which is what deflection is, okay? Deflection is a measure of the vertical movement of the beam, okay? So, with that being said, we can say that at point A, the deflection is going to be zero, and at point B, the deflection is going to be zero, okay? And I wrote that down here for you on the bottom, just so we can move quickly here. So the boundary conditions are as follows, at x equals zero, v equals zero, okay? So v is our deflection, right? Okay? 
and at x equals 15, v equals zero, okay? At b, all right? And using these two conditions, we can solve for C1 and C2, all right? And I'll show you how to do that now. So plugging in, and, and right now we're just working with deflection, okay? So we're gonna be working not with the rotation or with the moment, we're gonna be working with just this equation here, okay? Because that's what the question asks. And we are going to sub in x equals zero, v equals zero, okay? So let's do that first. So let's sub in v, okay? So if we sub in v equals zero here, okay? and we sub in x equals zero, all right? For all of these, we're going to get, this is gonna be zero plus zero, right? And then plus zero e or plus C2, okay? And I just subbed in all those zeros. I mean, you don't have to write that, but just to show you that C2 here, okay, is equal to zero, all right? So that means that our second constant of integration is equal to zero, all right? So knowing that, now we can find C1. Now how do we find C1? By using this boundary condition here, okay? So let's sub in V equals zero, okay? Again, we have zero here, okay? But this time, X has a value, all right? And let's also sub in C2 equals zero, so we're not even gonna write that down. All right, and negative 30, all right? 15 to the fourth, so we're just subbing in X into this equation over 12 plus 398, okay? Let's sub in 15 there, C1, let's sub in 15, all right? And, you know, just solving for this equation or just looking at it, I mean, we only have one unknown. We have one equation, we have one unknown, and that unknown is C1, all right? And if we just isolate for C1 and we solve for it, we should find that C1 is equal to negative 6,487. Five. Okay, there's no units, it's just a constant. And, all right, that is the first step that we need to do to solve for the deflection between A and B. All right, come back for the next video and we're going to solve for the deflections.